Season 10 of Apex Legends is basically here. I mean, it's here in a few hours anyway. So before the update drops, let's go ahead and look at the patch notes and look at all of the stuff in the Battle Pass coming for Season 10 in Apex Legends. So as I read off these patch notes, I'm going to go ahead and let the Battle Pass stuff run through the screen. Um, so that all that kind of being said, if you are a Horizon or a Valkyrie main, this Battle Pass is definitely for you. However, it seems like every other Legend really gets kind of shafted in this Battle Pass. But, I mean, they always kind of focus on one or the other anyway, so it's no real major change there. So let's dive into some patch notes while we're flipping through this thing. Obviously, the most anticipated part of the new update for Season 10 is going to be Seer dropping. This is another kind of uh, passive scout recon based class. So, like we said before in the previous video, which you can see in the card above, um, it has the Heart Seeker focus of attention and exhibit as the skills. We're going to do a deep dive into Seer like we did on Bloodhound, so be sure to keep an eye on that for when that comes out. Uh, but for now, we're just kind of just gloss over that because that new character is going to get a lot of love here soon. So there are a couple of POI changes after months of aggressive mining by the Harvester on World's Edge. The land is overmined, overburdened, and pushed to its limits. The Earth has fractured and erupted as nature is reclaiming what's hers. Hammond is scrambling to contain the damage they've caused using weather controlling machines, the Climatizer, which rapidly cools the surrounding area to sub-zero temperatures, and a lava siphon, which stabilizes the caldera. Fight for control of the always moving gondolas and Climatizer and the lava siphon. Traverse the bubbling hot lava with caution and show everyone what legends are made of. So at this point, we also have some little more information on the Rampage LMG. So Rampart actually created this LMG. Uh, so the idea is that it blasts into scene and has absolutely no chill, much like Rampart. This high-powered heavy ammo LMG takes its time, but packs one hell of a punch. Now, the Rampage does struggle at close range combat because of lower fire rate, but it makes it excel at mid-range. Now, an important distinction here is that you can load a thermite grenade into the special chamber, which overclocks the fire rate and lets the legend kind of go on, well, what the name is, Rampage. So this is a kind of a cool feature, a lot like the Sentinel. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're using this. It's going to make thermites a little more usable in some different ways. Probably the thing that I'm looking most forward to is going to be the Ranked Arenas. With the launch of the Emergence update, we're introducing Ranked Arenas. You begin your journey through Ranked Arenas in 10 placement matches where you, your performance will kind of determine your initial matchmaking, or your MMR. Um, so the MMR variance is pretty wide initially. So after your first games, you're going to either do well or get absolutely, you know, violated. Um, arenas are a head-to-head -head fight between two teams of three, so awarding arena points um, is more cut and dry than on the 20-team Battle Royale side of it. Uh, this means there is no entry cost and no AP for kills. Everything comes from just getting the win, so definitely go for that win and play smart in the ranked arenas. There are several major quality of life updates, like adding a new badge for win streak. So two, three, four, and five win streaks in a row get you unique badges. They added a hold on response to enemy pings so that we can say, enemy here, hold on, let me regain, you know, my shield, let me reheal, let me, you know, armor up, let me do something to get into a better position. Um, added distinct sound effects to the gold backpacks revive. So VFX were added in the Chaos Theory update. Um, this gives additional feedback to players that are close but not in line of sight for revives. They updated the, her the heirloom store to give players a better view of all the items related to that item, much like the rest of the store. It just it, it works much better now by the looks of it. Updated open pack button to show how many packs of each type are available. So highlighting the button shows a complete breakdown of unopened packs, whether it's legendary, epic, common, what have you for the packs themselves. So moving into the legend meta, we're going to see a lot of changes here. Um, Fuse is kind of one of those changes that seems like it could help quite a bit for him, but eh, it's a player that we really don't use very often. So enemies caught inside of the Ring of Fire of Fuse's Motherload Ultimate are now revealed to Fuse's team, which is kind of a nice thing is that you can see now the enemy inside of that ring instead of you also being blinded by that ring. Knuckle Cluster Tactical Explosion duration increased by 100%, so they essentially doubled the duration of that. The Grenadier passive can be toggled on and off to throw ordnance normally. So Horizon received a very small buff. They reduced the slow after the initial black hole pull, which is kind of a nerf, um, and then bumped Horizon's gravity lift speed up to a happy medium between 9.1 and the legacy update values. Now, obviously, numbers are kind of hard to d distinguish with things like this, so it really goes by feel. So go ahead and check it out and see what you think about how it feels now. 
So Revenant received what I'm going to call a very minuscule nerf. Um, there is now a visual and audio cue when the totem itself, the protection, is about to end, which can be seen and heard by other players. They also added a very brief slow period after being recalled to the totem itself. Like I said, a pretty small nerf, but it could make a difference, I guess. But when you pair that with rates and portals, it's really, there's no, no reason to not use it still. Now, we could be looking at a little bit of a caustic resurgence here. So the gas damage starts at five now and increases by one every other tick indefinitely. So essentially that means that if you decide to stay in the gas long enough, it could be up to 100 damage per tick. So just kind of keep that in mind. Cooldown on the tackle has been reduced from 25 to 20 seconds. And the ultimate cooldown has been reduced from 3.5 minutes to just 3 minutes. And the duration has also been reduced from 20 seconds to 15 seconds. So there are some changes to Caustic that could impact gameplay quite a bit. But we're going to have to play with him and see how it feels in today's meta. So the weapon meta in Season 10 of Apex, I think, is going to see a lot of changes. For instance, the alternator is going into the... Uh, the care package and the prowler is coming off now mind you the new rampage is going to be floor loot for a while so keep that in mind and pick it up whenever you see it as far as weapon hop-ups go there's a couple of major changes being made so the anvil receiver and the quick draw holster are being vaulted for now they're adding the boosted loader which reloading near empty but not at zero increases reload speed and overloads the next magazine with extra rounds this, so this hop-up will go on to the hemlock burst ar and the wingman which could make them a fairly fun gun to use well guns now, a major change that is actually going to impact a lot of things is going to be the reload speed increase, that stat increase that came with magazines has been moved to the stock of the gun now. So keep that in mind as you're running around is if you want to increase your reload speed, you no longer need to focus on magazines, which obviously helps with the magazine size, but the stock is what's going to help you with the reload speed. So just kind of be mindful of that. As well as the um, all stocks now offer so that re increased reload speed. But the Marksman Rifles, the 30-30, the G7, the Triple Take, will now take Sniper Stocks instead of Tax Stocks. The Sniper Stocks on Marksman Weapons will offer increased stability and sway reduction with slightly reduced handling bonuses from the Tax Stocks. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're looking for things that Stocks definitely have a very viable place in the meta in Season 10 of Apex. So the L-Star uses Energy Mags now. So the mags in the L-Star work differently from other magazines on weapons because of its unique interaction with the ammo. Instead, they will allow the L-Star to fire more shots before it overheats and allow it to cool off its heat uh, to build up slightly faster. Moving into Season 10, we can also use barrels for recoil reduction on the L-Star. The projectile VFX scale has been reduced by roughly half, and the first person on hit impact, um, the effect has been reduced quite a bit uh, for the intensity of it. And the hip fire spread has been increased on the L-Star. So just kind of keep that in mind if you pick that up. So as we start looking at the LMGs, they reduced the headshot multiplier for all LMGs from 2 to 1.75. They increased the limb shot multiplier from all LMGs from uh, 0.75 to 0.85. That's a pretty good increase in damage, I would say, for extremities and things like that. So as somebody that plays arenas a lot, that P2020 obviously is usually the first gun that I grab, along with the Mozambique. So they reduced handling time for all pistols by about 10%. This is the raise, holster, zoom in, zoom out time. So essentially with EDS a little faster, it'll move a little faster, it'll just work a little bit better. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're running around, is the pistols might be a little more viable, just to help you kind of uh, move around the map and, and kind of negate that quick draw holster being pulled out. So for those of you that use the Prowler, the time between bursts has been increased from 0.2 to 0.24. So the Prowler returns to floor loot as well with its trusty sidekick, the Select Fire Hop-Up. But, I mean, I definitely say that the Select Fire Hop-Up is definitely going to be the way to go on the Prowler. So one of the guns that I actually don't use very often, but I know that I should, is the M600 Spitfire. So this damage increase from 18 to 19 doesn't sound like a lot, but definitely adds up over time. So the hip fire spread uh, back to Season 8 pre-nerf values. So, curious to see what that does, because it makes it a little more accurate in the hip fire department. And the purple mag size was increased from 50 to 55, so you have a little more ammo in there. So, the alternator is a gun that I use a lot in, um, just pretty much whenever I can pick it up, right? But this gun now is going to be in the supply drop. So, reintroduce the disruptor rounds, which come equipped on the supply drop alternator. Disruptor rounds increase shield damage by 40%. Now, the disruptor rounds can only be found on alternators 
from the supply drop. So that's going to make the alternator an absolute shredding machine for the shields. So take the shields down and then hit them with the, uh, the Spitfire after that in the head and you're good to go. So the 3030 received a nerf, essentially. The reload speed from stocks is increased. So the 3030s are getting slapped, right? But when it comes to not slapping, it's just reload. We buffed the 3030s bonus to reload speed from stocks to help alleviate one of the sharper pain points when running this heavy rifle. So they say that, but they also say reload speed from, in, from stocks is increased. They probably mean decreased there. They probably mean that it reloads faster. All right, well, on to the EVA 8. So the base fire rate of the EVA 8 is going to be the same, but they significantly reduce bolt fire rate scaling for each rarity tier. So the so shotgun bolts are going to work a little bit differently with the gun. So it's going to take some time for us to play with that and to learn the ins and outs of it. And actually, I might just do a spreadsheet just for you guys if you want to do that. So for those of you that are also arena players, there are a bunch of price adjustments on the guns. A lot of guns are going up in price. Um, the bow is coming down. The charge rifle is coming down. The EVA is going up. Mastiff is going down. Peacekeeper is coming down. And the fuse knuckle cluster is going up. So there are just some adjustments that, that really could impact a few things. But guns that nobody really uses, other than maybe the EVA 8. But still, it's only 350 points, so it's not like it's a huge deal. So Horizon's Gravity Lift, um, starting charges reduced from 2 to 1. Mirage Psych Out, starting charges reduced from 3 to 2. And Bloodhound's Free Scans while in Beast Mode, um, reduced from 3 to 2. So that's a pretty hard nerf on Bloodhound, I would actually say, for that. And if you're interested in bug fixes, here's all the bug fixes. Um, if you guys are interested in checking out this link directly yourself, there's a link in the description down below for that. But if you guys found this Apex Guide, well, Apex Update Guide interesting, Go ahead and give it a like, give me a subscribe. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you around.